Modern microscopes, like this one from Zeiss, are remarkably powerful, but they're also rather large and expensive. Wouldn't it be nice to have one that you could take around with you? What I want to talk about today is a project that is aimed at making microscopes more mobile uh, or taking advantage of things you already are carrying with you to do microscopy. Uh, I'll set this up with a brief history of microscopes, uh, where they came from, how they ended up like they are now, and then I'll talk a little bit about why mobile microscopes might be useful, and then I'll give you an example of one uh, that we've built uh, to do uh, microscopy with a mobile phone. So looking back, the versions of the Zeiss microscope before the one I showed you in the last slide, uh, this, uh, these microscopes were works of art. As you can tell from uh, the pictures here, they were uh, ornate. Uh, they came in many different shapes and sizes. Uh, and these are all parts of uh, the Golob collection at UC Berkeley. And they show how the design of microscopes uh, has evolved over many years. But you can tell right away that they're much smaller. Uh, they had many fewer parts. Uh, and in some cases, they were even made to be portable. One of the earliest microscopes was uh, the device developed by Antony van Leeuwenhoek. And it was so simple that it had just a single lens. Uh, and that small lens, uh, right here at the top of the device, is mounted on a metal plate. And the sample was positioned uh, on that little uh, stick right there. And the screws at the bottom of the device were used to position the sample in front of this little ball lens. And Antony van Leeuwenhoek was able to use this to observe a wide range of different structures um, and was also the first to identify microorganisms. And he called them animalcules because if you see them first, you can call them whatever you want to call them. So this is an example of a very powerful microscope. He was able to see uh, microorganisms and see them move. Uh, and he was able to do that with a single lens system that easily fit into his pocket. So why did things get so large? Well, one of the reasons why they got so large is that there are a wide range of different diseases that need studying. And as we continue to study more diseases, uh, imaging is a, a critical part of many of the, the disease diagnosis processes. But they also help us to learn about the life cycle, uh, to be able, more recently, to label specific proteins and to observe how uh, uh, therapies might be impacting the development of these diseases. But imaging is something we still need to do. And even though there are many different ways to do imaging, many new contrast modalities, many improvements in cameras, uh, many diseases still need to be imaged in order to be diagnosed. Or at least imaging can be used for diagnosis. So here are some bloodborne pathogens that if you take a blood smear and you look at it under a microscope, you can uh, confirm that, in fact, you have this disease. Similarly, with various gastrointestinal parasites, if you take a sample and you're able to observe either the organism itself or a cyst form of the organism, you can positively identify that you have this disease. Now, oftentimes, this isn't the fastest way to do uh, diagnosis in, in well-developed countries. But in many parts of the world where these are more uh, realistic problems for the average person, microscopy is still a central method for diagnosis. A good example of this is tuberculosis. So tuberculosis continues to be a serious problem, kills over 2 million people per year, and microscopes are among the, 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 the central most diagnostic tools available. Uh, even though uh, there are a variety of alternate methods that we would use uh, in a developed uh, hospital in order to diagnose the disease, microscopy is still very important in a number of regions. And oftentimes, those are the regions without access to high quality doctors or high quality microscope equipment that would be necessary. So as a way of emphasizing that point, uh, maybe I'll step off here a moment. This is a map that shows uh, the distribution of tuberculosis cases that uh, were recorded uh, across the globe. And you'll see that this, the size of the, the countries are scaled for the incidence rates of the disease. And so you'll notice that. Uh, North America and much of South America is virtually non-existent because we don't have many cases. But Africa and Asia um, uh, and uh, uh, Southeast Asia have significant caseloads. Uh, so let me contrast where the cases are with where the doctors are. 
So now, all of a sudden, Africa is much, much smaller. Um, Asia as well has reduced in, in scaling. But Africa, I mean, but, uh, but US, um, North America, and Europe are, are rather bloated. So we have many doctors. Um, and with those doctors are well-equipped hospitals. Uh, but the places where many of these infectious diseases are do not have the physicians capable or the equipment available to do the diagnosis. So how can my mobile microscopy help? Well, it's become clear over the last many years that mobile phones are uh, becoming ubiquitous. In uh, countries across the globe, uh, individuals have cell, cell phones. They're able to use them for a wide range of purposes. And several years ago, a group of undergrads in a microscopy course that I taught, we began to experiment with using the cameras that were emerging on phones to do microscopic imaging. Rather than taking, uh, using the phone to take a picture of large things like people or trees, uh, could we use that same camera without modifying the camera itself? Can we develop a lens system that will adapt that camera for use uh, to do microscopy? And our early uh, efforts were, were uh, uh, encouraging. And we developed a, a simple device that we called Cellscope, which put together some uh, uh, eyepiece optics together with an objective lens and mounted it on the camera phone and allowed you to take uh, images. And so this device is something that uh, we've been developing over the last number of years. And the, the whole point of this is to take advantage of the cell phones that many, many consumers are, are already buying, which is pushing the price down and increasing the performance. Can we harness that technology and use it to do imaging? The overall uh, concept is that a person with the ability to take microscopic images of relevant samples, such as a, a blood sample or a sputum sample, they would be able to capture an image, potentially do some amount of image processing on the handset itself, um, and then potentially send the image to a clinical expert who could provide either a second opinion or uh, improve uh, the, the advice about diagnosis and treatment. And so by, by using the, the, the compact, highly capable handset uh, that are becoming ubiquitous, together with uh, clinical experts who could be anywhere in the world, they don't need to be in the region where the diseases are found, um, a mobile microscope could help to uh, enhance or spread quality health care to places that it hasn't uh, reached yet. So based on that original device, we've uh, developed a number of uh, different devices. And I'll give a brief demonstration of, of how, uh, how we use these uh, different technologies. The goal of our project is to turn uh, a standard cell phone into a multi-purpose microscope. So let me show you a few examples. Um, the original one we worked with was uh, a, a system that was high magnification. And the goal was to be able to look at blood smears and resolve white blood cells, red blood cells, and platelets. So what we've built is a system that has a little light source, um, has a, a small stage for a slide, and then some optics and mirrors that bring uh, uh, to come to a point here where we want to line up with the camera of our cell phone. So we take the cell phone and simply stick it in. And then we can move our slide around simply by hand. Uh, and we can focus with a small ring underneath the stage. And if we do that, uh, then we can see a magnified image. This is an image of some bacteria and some blood. And uh, uh, one can pan around, adjust the exposure, the focus, take a photo, or even take a video if this were a live sample and something were moving. So that's all uh, possible. Again, no change to the phone. Uh, it simply sticks into the, to the holder. Now, because the phone itself is simply an imaging system, uh, we might as well use it to do different kinds of imaging. So another uh, simple clip-on attachment that we've made to the, for the same phone is <clears throat> an otoscope. So an otoscope is used by primary care physicians to inspect the ear. And so this device has a simple lens over the camera and is uh, designed so that it captures the same sort of image that uh, a physician would see when looking into the ear with a traditional otoscope. But in this case, you can capture the image, you can email it, you can send it, uh, and you could uh, uh, look at the ear at any hour of the day or night. And 
A third device uh, is focused not on ears but on eyes. Uh, this is a uh, device that uh, has been used to uh, diagnose um, or screen for trachoma. And uh, this is done by holding the device up to uh, the patient's um, eye, flipping the, the eyelid, and inspecting uh, the, the base of the, of the eyelashes. Uh, and this can be done uh, as well with uh, additional lighting, um, so adding uh, some, uh, some illumination uh, increases the, the ability to resolve the details that are necessary. So again, small improvements, small changes to uh, the optics um, outside of the phone are uh, letting us do imaging with standard technology uh, at a range of different length scales. With the ability to take microscopic images with your cell phone, uh, there are a range of different ways uh, you could use such a mobile microscope device. Uh, one that we've talked about already is healthcare, uh, being able to take images of relevant disease samples. Uh, but there are a number of other places where mobile microscopy could be very useful. For example, agriculture. What is causing that, uh, that crop to, uh, to die? What is the uh, cause of the disease? Taking a, a microscopic image of leaf samples are one way to help diagnose the problem. Similarly, uh, a number of samples that we might want to study uh, scientifically are not things we can culture in a laboratory. And so doing uh, imaging in the field is necessary for those cases. Um, having microscopes that are more portable, that are lower cost, that are easier to deploy uh, may be a way of getting access, getting imaging, into places where imaging hasn't gotten yet. And similarly, education. Uh, these uh, devices we've uh, enjoyed working with and have had the chance to introduce to some classrooms, some uh, middle school classrooms, and that experience has been uh, enjoyable for both of us, and we're hoping that uh, mobile microscopes can be useful not just for uh, researchers or healthcare providers, uh, but also for uh, teachers and students. Uh, one example of where we've tried to take these devices out into the field uh, and learn about how they're useful is in India. And together with World Health Partners, we evaluated whether uh, an ability to take uh, simple blood smears in remote uh, uh, healthcare clinics would be a useful capability for uh, those, those regions. And we're continuing efforts to understand where can microscopy go where, the, where is it needed, what are the diseases and conditions that it can be used to diagnose in the field. And that's really the next stage of work. Now that we know that microscopes can be built and they can be built simply, uh, cell phones can be used to power those microscopes and provide the image collection capabilities, uh, do they actually work in the field? And that remains an open question and one we're very excited about. So with that, I'll end and thank all of the people who have contributed greatly to advancing this project uh, and the support we've received.